Hello everybody, today I'm going to talk about my top 10 tents. A lot of people have asked me about this over the years in terms of what my favourites are. I've had over a hundred tents. So I've randomly gone through my list, looked at all the ones I've had and kind of narrowed it down to top 10. So let's go back in time. Number one would be the North Face VE25. A classic expedition and base camp tent. I've had two of these uh, going back years now. Um, I don't have them anymore but at the time I loved it. Great base tent for the family. Great for any conditions, winter, summer, whatever. A wee bit of a faff to put up because they're quite cumbersome and quite time consuming but once they're up, wow, strong. You can trust them for anything, uh, they're ideal for any conditions. Nice and roomy, comfortable inside, lots of pockets, lots of headroom, undercover cooking, you really feel like you're in your own little cave and well away from all the bad weather. So that's definitely up there in one of my top 10. So number two in my list would be the Terra Nova Quasar, another blast from the past. Super strong mountain tent, usually came in a two person format. Uh, it was a tent I always lusted after when I was a lot younger and eventually managed to get, uh, I think I've actually had two or three of them over the years, but it's a bit of a classic, often copied as well by other companies like Force 10 and Van Gogh. Um, but yeah, brilliant. The four pole design with the five crossover points makes for a very strong structure. Two vestibules at either end made it very easy to use. You could cook and store or you could exit one end without bothering your sleeping partner. But very strong, brilliant all season tent. Obviously used for expeditions but a uh, favourite and amongst UK climbers and walkers as well. Um, the only downside I would say about it was that um, it's inner pitch first which is still that wee bit of a faff. So in some ways it would have been better if it had uh, an external pole structure. But other than that, yeah, a bit of a classic and uh, been around for years and deservedly so. Right, for the third choice, I'm going to go to the other end of the scale, ultralight backpacking. And what kind of tent do you go for that? There's a lot of super sexy, super light tents out there nowadays made in Dyneema. Um, but you don't necessarily need to spend that money. I think there are far cheaper alternatives. And the one that sticks out for me is the Six Moon Designs Lunar Solo, which comes in, I think, about 700, 750 grams. Uses a single walking pole, so you have to allow for the fact that if you use walking poles, it's the tent for you. But obviously, if you don't, you need to look at alternatives. But it's very, well, I say very, relatively inexpensive. So it's a great bargain tent. It's very roomy, really easy to put up. It stays dry when you pitch it. Being single skin, you have to allow for some condensation and manage that. But because of its perimeter netting uh, venting, the moisture tends to run off and out the tent without dripping into the inner, which is a problem even with some very high-end DCF tents that I've had. So as a, a design, I think it's brilliant. Very simple, very spacious, big floor plan. You can get you, your kit, and a dog in there. You can cook undercover. Super light, packs really small. And if you're a walking pole user, it's the perfect through hiking tent. So I think that's the uh, that's my next recommendation on my list. Okay, staying with the ultralight theme. Um, if you don't use walking poles, what would be the alternative? For me, one of the tents I've used, uh, which I really like, is the Big Agnes Copper Spur series. I had the ultralight one, so the one person version. Well, you can get the two, I think you can get three person as well. But I think they're brilliant. They feel incredibly airy and roomy inside and yet they take up very little space in your pack and they are very light. So their internal volume works very well and on the two person you have two doors and two exits which works really well when there's a couple that are camping. Um, they just feel very airy, they're nicely made, they're quite delicate in some ways, the materials are light which is the trade-off with obviously trying to go as light as you can, but nicely featured, lots of pockets and little thoughtful bits and pieces in terms of how they're designed. It just makes them very livable. Um, and for through hiking in relatively good weather, um, I think it's the way forward if you don't use walking poles. These obviously use DAC alloy pole structures. Um, but yeah, I found it really nice to use. Um, great in kind of three season weather relatively wind stable because they're virtually self-standing apart from pegging out the vestibules and uh, yeah come thoroughly recommended 
for me. Okay, uh, next on my list is a budget buy which I think is great value. Decathlon, they make a tent called the Quick Hiker 2 which is $69.99 so you're into the kind of festival tent market almost at that level. But yeah, I think it's a really nicely designed, well featured tent. Very warm, stable and because of Decathlon's buying power, the sheer amount they can make means that you don't really suffer in terms of quality too badly. It's $69.99, it's got some nice materials, some nice features. It fits two people, it's snug but it's a good shape and it has a double entry door again so for two people it's quite a nice design to use, it's convenient to get in and out of. It has overhanging door um, so you don't get drips on the inner. It's got a lot of solid mesh inside which means it's relatively warm and it just has uh, nicely featured with good loft um, gear lofts. It has gear lofts above you as well for storage, uh, good zips. Poles are not the best in the world, but they're uh, perfectly strong and it's solid. Um, I used it in some very windy conditions over a few nights and was pleasantly surprised just by how solid it is. So if you're looking at under £100, it's maybe two of you that are going to be carrying it, then I would say the Quick Hiker 2 is a very good value tent to look at. Okay, this will be one that will please a lot of people, I think. Um, there are a lot of people out there who are obsessed with their Hillebergs. And I've had a lot of Hillebergs, I have to say. Um, however, my favourite is probably the Hilleberg Namax 2 GT. It could just as easily be the three-person one, or even possibly the Namax 2 without the GT extended vestibule. But I do like having that extra space. Um, I basically chose it because I was going to Iceland about five or six years ago and was looking for something really solid, wind-stable, and expecting a lot of bad weather. I knew I'd spend quite a lot of time in it. So I was really looking for something to be comfortable, spacious. You could cook inside and you could just chill out, relax, but know that the thing was solid um, and would accommodate at least two of us without any problem. So in the end, I chose the Hilleberg Namax 2 GT. Relatively heavy, maybe. Somewhere in between some of the bigger tents and some of the lighter backpacking orientated tents. But it is a black label one, so I knew it would take a hammering. Um, and it did. It worked really well. I've used it in a whole variety of conditions. It's the only tent I've ever actually been flooded out in. Um, I was camping once at three in the morning. A river burst its banks and covered an area the size of a football field in about six inches of water. I woke up as the water was about to overcome the tray ground sheet, but not a leak inside. And it gave me just enough time to escape. Um, so it's heavy. But it's it's great. It's a, I love it again as a mountain or a base tent. It's a kind of do-it-all two-person tent. So it doesn't matter where you go in the world, this thing will work well, whatever the conditions. And for that reason, I would recommend it. It's also worth mentioning it has two large vents towards the top of the fly sheet. So unlike some Hilleberg models, I think it ventilates better and is less prone to condensation, despite having a fly sheet that goes all the way to the ground. So for me, it's one of the best designs, um, and I would certainly buy another one. Okay, scaling back down again to a one-person tent. Uh, I was looking for something I could use all year round. I'm a bit of a weight obsessive, so I do like a strong tent, but I don't like carrying anything over 2K, 2 kilograms. So what do you use? Well, I looked around for a long time, and uh, for whatever reason, I stumbled across Lightwave and its Sigma S15, as it was called. Um, or sorry it was called the S10 at the time it's now known as the S15 because there's a smaller S10 version has come out since so let's talk about the S15 single skin hybrid so it has an inner breathable wall and it has a fly sheet I say a fly sheet it's just single skin but the difference with this one is it's both breathable and has a carbon coated interior surface which soaks up the moisture and then allows it to transport its way through the fly sheet not unique but relatively rare and the uh, coating is called 37.5 and is featured in a couple of other tents around the world now including Big Agnes. Um, so it's a technology that's been adopted by a few brands but Lightwave I think were one of the first to really um, champion it in their products. It was an excellent tent, I kept it for maybe a year and a half, two years, for me that's a long time. Um, lots of space, very strong. A lot of guidelines on it to make sure that it's stable in high winds, which is perfect for Scotland. Um, 
light, so about one and a half kilos, which is brilliant for me in packs, small and narrow, which was really good. And just the speed of pitching and taking it back down being a single skin was a big uh, boon for me. The only caveat I would say about that is that 90% of the time that works really well. 10% of the time the fabric can be overcome by very damp or wet conditions. And at that point, they'll no longer breathe. So they'll get to a stage where either it's below zero or if it's very, very humid and very wet outside, it can no longer do its job as well as it could do in terms of breathing. So at that point, you're going to have to mop up some moisture. And that's maybe one of the shortcomings that you have when you don't have a double skin tent. But overall, a brilliantly simple pared down design, which is typical light wave and built for um, difficult conditions, so very stable, and yet an excellent weight. So it comes highly recommended. Uh, okay, I think we have got three tents left in my top ten list. Um, as you can probably see in the background, no guesses what this one is. If you don't mind the weight, then this is probably the most bomber one-person tent, and it's justifiably popular as a result. You'll see these in YouTube videos everywhere. Everybody seems to have one. I have had one in the past and the only reason I sold it was the weight. I just found it overkill for most of my purposes and I don't really like carrying above two kilos. But if you don't mind two kilograms plus, this is probably the perfect one person bomb shelter for just about every condition. Uh, if you watch YouTube videos all over the world in high winds, rain, snow or whatever, these things are still standing when most things have collapsed. Um, you can get lighter doubler style bivouac tents, which I do like. Um, and again, that's only because I like saving weight and I don't mind single skin condensation issues uh, and the simplicity. But if you want double skin, room to cook, enough room to sleep and know that you can sleep securely, whatever the conditions throw at you, the Hilleberg Zulu or Solo, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, is the way to go. Okay, we're down to my last two of the top ten tents. Now, these are not in any particular order. I'm not saying that number two and number one are the best. But what I did want to say is that there may be two of the most flexible tents, the most kind of universally suitable tents for a lot of purposes. So if we're looking at one person, the Hilleberg Acto. I know this is an old design and this will be controversial maybe to some of you. I've had two of them. Uh, no surprises there probably. <laughs> but they go back years. I don't have one anymore, but it was always a classic tent. I think um, Hilleberg came up with a blinder on this one. Justifiably, it came became one of the most popular designs, and I can see why. It was just a perfect combination of size, weight, and strength that meant it could be used four seasons. It could be used as an emergency place to stay if a bothy was full or whatever. And even people have used them in Arctic expeditions and the like, uh, which is probably pushing it a wee bit because it can get a bit flappy but uh, a really nice, comfortable, one-person, strong, simple, reliable tent made out of very good, the Kerlin fabric obviously is a big selling point of these tents, just meant that it's very reliable, there's very little to go wrong, a single hoop and some end poles. Venting maybe not the best, which is partly just to do with the design, so it can be prone to condensation. But typical of a kind of Nordic tent designed for damp conditions, the fly sheet comes to the ground so it keeps snow and rain out. Um, it's been copied, it's been changed a few times. Uh, you'll see some other versions out there including one from Fjallraven, the Abisko One Light, which is really a kind of homage to the, the Acto with maybe a few bells and whistles. But in some ways I think they've overcomplicated it. The Acto's simplicity and honesty I think is one of the great things about it. And as a result I've had two used them in a variety of conditions and it's always done the job. Packs small, packs light, but it's strong and you know you can sleep and the thing will still be standing in the morning. Okay, so finally, finally we get to number 10 of the 10. And I'm not saying this is the best one, and this is not number one out of the 10, but one of the reasons I wanted to leave it to the end is, again, for me, this is a more flexible design. This is something you can use one person or two person and across the year in most conditions and I think that makes it a very good proposition as an all-rounder which is why I've left it to the end. So the tent in question is the MSR Access 2 
and I've gone for the two because it will take two people relatively comfortably but it will also be it will take one person in luxury um, it's light enough to carry as a one person tent it's still under the two kilos and yet it's very strong and part of the reason it is so strong is that it uses eastern cyclone poles which despite some early teething problems with are actually very strong they flex and you can bend them right around in a hoop without them snapping and they don't take a bend like the traditional alloy poles so in heavy winds they spring back and they don't bend and then uh, retain a bend afterwards and as a result I think they've come up with a blinding design to be honest um, some people have complained about the venting in it and saying that it's condensation prone I haven't found that and I've had the access for a while the Access 1 version has got less venting options in it um, and you can't cross vent it so easily so it's more prone to condensation. The Access 2 I think has none of those issues but it's still a very streamlined, slippery, windproof, can take snow loading um, and it's light enough to carry as a one person. Take it with two and you're still comfortable. Use it all year round, you're still comfortable. It's not going to be expedition grade but then most people are not going out on expeditions we're maybe out there in the hills uh, in four seasons, but we don't necessarily go out there to get an arctic battering. Um, so for most conditions for me, it's probably the number one most flexible design. The one downside, the caveat I would say is, it's in a pitch first, you know, and there's no way you can get around that unfortunately. So you have to be quick in very wet conditions getting the thing up, and it is easy because it clips into the frame without any problem. Fling that fly sheet over, and get it clipped in and then get under cover and that for me is the only downside if MSR if you ever watch this video if you could do an exoskeleton version of this using the eastern poles I think you'd be on to an absolute blinder and that would solve one of the last remaining problems with it but if you want an all-rounder folks this is the one for me I would say uh, not too expensive plenty of room for one and two and uh, just a very flexible reliable design and the fact that it's carbon eastern poles composite poles i should say so there you go msr access to so that's it that's my top 10 tents um a personal choice it'd be great to get your comments and your feedback and no doubt i've missed out some absolute crackers there and i'd love to hear about what people think i've missed and uh, if i've got that completely wrong in some cases as I say, it's a subjective list um, and based mostly on my experience. I've certainly had all of these tents at one time or another and there'll be lots of tents out there I've never tried but uh, I'm somewhere between 100 and 200 tents so I will keep searching. There's no perfect tent for every scenario as we all know and I dare say there's some glaring uh, exceptions that I've missed so let me know and again thanks for watching and I look forward to having a chat about some of these choices.